Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings. Having trouble winning games in Madden 23? Help me! Help me! The answer might be as simple as a setting in your coaching adjustments you're not doing. Got it! As there are several huge advantages that can be found here on offense and defense that you should be doing every single game. I'm at Money Shot, and in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what every coaching adjustment does so you have a better understanding of what is best to use right now in Man 23. But before I do, if you are enjoying the content and want to see more, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comments section as it really helps out the channel. And if you need even more help on offense or defense, you can also check out my ebooks as well, as every ebook comes with a free 15 page tips and strategy guide, as well as some of the best money play breakdowns in the game. All you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pinned comment to have them sent directly to your email for instant download. This is the second video this year that I've put out on this topic as I had a lot of people request an updated version, but I go more in depth into certain settings in that video. So, so if you guys missed that and you want to know more about this topic, I will have a link in the description for that video as well as an on-screen pop at the end of this video. So stick around for that. To start off, I will show you guys how to access the coaching adjustments menu as I'm sure there are a lot of people watching this video who never use this at all. To access this on next gen consoles, all you have to do is push in the right stick from anywhere on the play select screen before choosing a play. I'm going to go over a lot of advantages on both offense and defense, so you want to make sure that you set these as soon as possible when in-game, ideally the first chance you get. I'm going to start off on offense where there's only four options, and most of these don't really have any benefit at all unless you are new to the game and not comfortable doing certain things like clicking on and making catches yourself. In fact, most of these have no real benefit to experienced players at all except for ball carry, which I will get into in a moment. But let's start off with blocking, just to get that one out of the way, as this one is so worthless it shouldn't even be an option here here and I don't want to waste a lot of time on it. In short, leave it unbalanced as changing this at all has only negative consequences. If you said too aggressive, you will get holding penalties all the time. And if you said too conservative, your blocks won't hold up as long. So what's the point of doing this? <clears throat> Next up, I'll go over pass catching options. If you are an experienced player and like to switch on your receiver to make your own adjustments during the play to make a catch, you will want to leave this alone as it will trigger animations that will be hard to get out of, making it harder for you to do what you want during the play. But if you are less experienced and want help from the computer, there are several advantages to these settings. I did an experiment where I set the deep and intermediate pass catching to conservative threw 10 passes to see how many I could complete, then I said to aggressive and did it again. When it came to deep passing, I saw no real difference between conservative and balanced, but when I set it to aggressive on both intermediate and deep pass catching, I noticed that the receiver would often go up for unnecessary aggressive catches that resulted in less completed passes. So aggressive is out. The biggest advantage that I found was in the intermediate catching option when set to conservative, which would trigger a possession catch where the receiver would prioritize protecting the ball and getting down to reduce knockouts, as this option resulted in more completed passes over the middle. So my final verdict for these is the fault for deep passing and conservative for intermediate. The most important one on offense is definitely ball care, which I'm going to break down in two different sections, running backs and everyone else. If you have ever run a design run play with a non-running back player, usually a wide receiver or a quarterback, you may have noticed that they are designed to fumble a lot. And this is where this setting can give you a huge advantage. I once again did an experiment where I chose the design running play with the quarterback to run the ball 10 times to see how many times I would fumble and not surprisingly, I fumbled twice. I then also ran the ball five times while in passing plays, and the results were way worse, as a fumble was almost guaranteed, resulting in fumbling four out of five attempts. Obviously, you don't want to set this setting to aggressive because that'll make this much worse, but when I set this to conservative once again, the fumbles completely disappeared, as I didn't fumble at all on the next 10 design runs, and I only fumbled once when running on a pass play. So if you're going to run with any non-running back player, you have to have this set to conservative. I also did an experiment on the running back where I ran the ball 10 times on a toss play from the five yard line with both settings to aggressive and conservative to see what would happen. The biggest takeaway was that I didn't fumble at all, not once with either setting. So you really can go with either one with no real downside. But I also wanted to see how many times I would score and see if the aggressive setting would trigger any animations that would make it worth your while to have on. I only scored one additional touchdown when I had it set to aggressive, but I did get one strange looking animation where the running back was propelled forward in a way that I could only attribute to the setting itself. So the final verdict when running with running backs is to set this setting to aggressive since I didn't fumble the ball either way and I did see a clear boost. Next up, I'm going to go over defense, but before I do, I was really excited when DraftKings reached out to me to promote their product as I use their app every week to play daily fantasy football. 
If you watch my channel, you might know by now that I am a Philadelphia fan. And other than watching my team win the Super Bowl, the second most exciting game of my life was watching a boring defensive struggle between New Orleans and Carolina a few years ago. Why? Because I had a first place ticket that was winning me thousands of dollars for just a $10 entry. And it suddenly felt like I was winning the Super Bowl. It's a feeling that's hard to describe, but DraftKings has so many ways to make watching sports more fun. Download the DraftKings Sports app now. New customers use promo code MONEYSHOT, bet $5 on any NFL playoff game, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code MONEYSHOT only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Yup, that's right. New customers bet just $5 on any NFL playoff game of your choosing, and you'll instantly get $200 in bonus bets deposited into your account. Wondering what you can do with $200 in bonus bets? Try out Same Game Parlays, where you can combine multiple bets from one game, like which team will win and by how much for a shot at even bigger winnings. If mobile sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry, as you can still get it on the phone with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. So next up on defense, I'm going to go over several things right away that you should just leave alone. Starting with auto flip. In years past, taking this off was a good option when setting up certain blitzes, but now I can't see any reason to turn this off. As needing to flip a play, it takes way too long and can be disastrous against online opponents. Auto alignment should also be left on default. Setting it to base is very helpful when it comes to hiding what type of coverage you are in, but doing this removes any advantage you would get from the design of that coverage. For example, if you play cover two man, one of the biggest advantages is the cornerbacks playing tight to the receiver, where they can press and alter routes. And all these advantages are lost if you start to play 8 yards away instead of right in front of the receivers like they're supposed to do. The next one is one of the biggest reasons I wanted to remake this video and that is ball in the air defense. Which in the original video I showed, I said it was best to set to play ball. Since then though, aggressive catching really became the meta. So what's the best way to stop that now? The option that I have been recommending in recent videos is to play receiver for more knockouts but I never actually confirmed it if it's actually the right option or not until now. So I decided to select a play that had a route where I could guarantee guaranteed tight coverage so that the defensive back would be in a position to make a play and the results were shocking to say the least. On my first 10 attempts I set it to play receiver and half of the passes resulted in knockouts as the defensive back routinely separated the receiver and the ball at the catch point. I then set it to play ball expecting maybe an interception or two but instead I completed every single pass a perfect 10 out of 10 and it felt so much easier that it was unreal. I also tried some other routes like deep crossers where I knew that the ball would be easier for the computer to intercept, but the results were pretty much the same regardless of the setting as I only got one more interception when playing ball. Now I know every takeaway is important, but so is every down, so to me the results were obvious and that is to always set it to play receiver and you will dramatically improve your pass defense. Next up we have cornerback matchups and this hasn't changed. If you have a star receiver and a star cornerback, you obviously want them to match up, either by overall or by depth chart. But if you have an unusually fast or tall receiver like Tyreek Hill or Mike Williams, you might want to change this to speed or height, especially when it comes to speed as fast receivers can just run right past lower corners for easy one-play touchdowns. Next up, when it comes to option defense, this should always be set to conservative, and here's why. When it is set to balance, the read defender, which is the defender with an R above his head, will choose on any given play whether to wait for the quarterback to keep the ball or chase the running back on a handoff. Setting this to conservative will make sure that he always does the animation where he waits on the quarterback, which is really important, as it guarantees it will be an inside handoff, which usually goes for much less yards. When it comes to strip ball and tackling, both of these are aimed at trying to create more fumbles from AI defenders, which in my opinion, really doesn't happen that much anyways. So the negatives, which are guaranteed things like random 15 yard face max penalties every five plays, allowing yards after contact, and a lot of missed tackles really outweigh the potential benefits of this which never really happened anyway. The only setting here that makes any sense at all is to have strip ball on conservative at all times as it will result in much less broken tackles with the only negative being less strip attempts by the AI defenders but we already discussed that that really doesn't do anything. Next up I'm going to go over zone drop settings as this is probably one of my most asked questions in the comments. Zone drop settings is something that you really should be changing throughout the entire game based on what your opponent is running on offense as different zone drop depths can stop different types of plays and different routes. I'm going to start off with flats, which is probably most commonly found in cover two zones, such as cloud flats, hard flats, and soft squats. The only two options I ever set my flats to are zero and five. Zero for run defense and five for pass defense. If you set your flats to zero, you will see that the defenders will come down right to the line of scrimmage, which is good for cutting off outside run plays, whether you're in a cover two or any coverage that has hard flats, like a hard flat cover three. Using this adjustment will often force running backs back inside as it is a the best way to contain outside run plays. For pass plays, I typically leave my zone drops to 5 as 
zero doesn't really cover any routes past the line of scrimmage. But five is a perfect depth for flat routes, drags, and five yard out routes. Curl flats are much more commonly used as cover three and cover four defenses are much better than cover two when it comes to deep coverage. These will once again need to change based on what your opponent is running on offense. If they're running a lot of slants, 20 yard depths are best to cover them up. If they're running deep crossers, set them to 30 to take that away. Next up, when it comes to hooks, these are probably the least effective zones on the field as they just don't cover very well in relation to the deep secondary zones behind them. In fact, the only time I set hooks is when I'm in the red zone, and that is because deep zones have nowhere to go due to the condensed field and have to play more shallow, which means this is the only area where you have more control over the spacing between the hook zones and the deep zones. So basically, whenever my opponent is scoring range, I like to set my hook zones to match the distance they have to go. Like they're in the 10 yard line, I like to set the hooks to 10. But if I'm in cover three where the seams are vulnerable, I will set them back an extra five yards to about 15 to take that away. And last but not least, I'm also going to go over zone coverage, which is only available on next-gen consoles. For the purpose of this video, I tried several different setups, routes, and plays, and I had a hard time trying to find a visual difference in the coverage for this video. As cover four match defenses looked exactly the same either way, so I would probably still put it on to be safe, but I couldn't find any visual difference for you guys. So if that's it, that's the video. If you guys enjoyed the content, please make sure to be a subscriber and hit the like button as it really helps out the video. Other than that, I will have the first video that I made on this topic as well as another related defensive tip video popping up on screen right now. So if you guys want to see that, I'm sure it'll help out your game. Other than that, thanks for watching Man My Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below.